Hello and welcome. RBBB is a relatively common condition that affects the heart's electrical system, and it's essential to understand the implications it may have on your overall health. So, if you or someone you know has been diagnosed with RBBB, or if you're just interested in learning more about this condition, and this video is for you. Let's dive in. Do you remember how the heart works? Let me explain it to you in simple terms. The heart has two upper chambers called the atria and two lower chambers called the ventricles. When the heart beats, an electrical signal travels from the atria to the ventricles through a pathway called the atrioventricular or AV node in his Purkinje system. The signal first stimulates the left side of the ventricular septum and then spreads to the rest of the ventricles through the left and right bundle branches. This whole process of ventricular depolarization usually takes less than 0.1 second or 100 milliseconds in healthy adults and the normal QRS complex, which is measured by computer from all 12 leads, is less than or equal to 110 milliseconds or about 2.5 small boxes on the ECG paper by eye. However, if anything interferes with this normal process, like a block or delay in the bundle branch system, it can make the QRS complex wider or change its direction. This class focuses on how bundle branch blocks or delays affect the QRS complex and STT waves on an ECG. A general principle to keep in mind when predicting what the ECG will show with a bundle branch or fascicular block is that the last, and usually dominant, component of the QRS vector will be shifted in the direction of the last part of the ventricles to be depolarized. This means that the major QRS vector shifts toward the regions of the heart that are most delayed in being stimulated. Let's talk about right bundle branch block, or RBBB for short. When the right bundle branch is cut or conduction is slowed down, it causes a delay in right ventricular stimulation, which leads to a widened QRS complex. Normally, the interventricular septum is the first part of the ventricles to be depolarized, but this shouldn't be affected by RBBB because the left bundle still stimulates it. The second phase is the simultaneous depolarization of the left and right ventricles, which also isn't affected by RBBB because the left ventricle is electrically predominant. The third phase is delayed right ventricular depolarization, which produces a second R wave in lead V1 and a broad S wave in lead V6. To diagnose RBBB, you need to look at leads V1 and V6 in particular, as they show the characteristic pattern of an RSR complex with a broad R wave in V1 and a QRS pattern with a YNS wave in V6. You might also notice that T waves in the right chest leads are inverted, which is a characteristic finding with RBBB. RBBB can be split into two forms, complete and incomplete, based on the width of the QRS complex. Complete RBBB is when the QRS complex lasts 0.12 seconds or longer and has an RSR pattern in lead V1 and a QRS pattern in lead V6. In contrast, incomplete RBBB has the same QRS patterns, but its duration is between 0.10 and 0.12 seconds. RBBB has clinical significance and can be caused by various factors. Some people have it without any underlying heart disorder, making it an isolated ECG abnormality. However, RBBB can also be associated with organic heart disease, including conditions that affect the right side of the heart, such as pulmonary disease, valvular lesions, cardiomyopathies, and coronary disease. In older people, it may be related to degenerative changes in the conduction system or occur after cardiac surgery. Pulmonary embolism can also cause RBBB by producing acute right-sided heart overload. RBBB does not require specific treatment by itself, and it can be permanent or transient. Sometimes it only appears when the heart rate exceeds a certain critical value, and it's called rate-related RBBB, which is not a diagnostic finding. However, in patients with acute anterior wall infarction, a new RBBB may indicate an increased risk of complete heart block, especially when associated with left anterior or posterior fascicular block and a prolonged PR interval. A new RBBB with acute ST segment elevation anterior myocardial infarction is also a marker of more extensive myocardial damage, often associated with heart failure or even cardiogenic shock. In some cases, a pattern resembling RBBB, known as pseudo-RBBB, is characteristic of the Brugada pattern and may be associated with an increased risk of ventricular tachyridnias. 
It's worth noting that an RSR pattern with a narrow QRS duration of 100 milliseconds or less and a very small, up to 2 mm, terminal R wave in V1 and V2 is a common normal variant and should not be mistaken for an incomplete right ventricular branch block. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. Please share this video with your colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and give us a positive evaluation. We hope to see you soon in our next video.